Using chromatic notes or chromatic phrases is a huge part of what we consider the sound of jazz. In this video I'm going to show you five great examples of how you can incorporate that into your own playing. I'm going to do this by analyzing some great licks that I've transcribed from people like Charlie Parker, Pat Metheny, George Benson, Doug Rainey and Pat Martino. I'm sure you can pick up something you can insert into your own playing. I know I did. My name is Jens Larsen. If you want to learn jazz and make music then subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. In this example, Parker is playing an F major 9 arpeggio and he's playing the first part of the arpeggio as a triplet, so first a leading note and then running up the arpeggio to the 7th. From the 7th he connects up to the 9th just using half steps, so just all chromatic movement. And then going down to the root again and then down an A minor arpeggio, A minor triad. And then we get this, which is actually kind of like he's playing an A flat minor resolving down to G minor. So what he's doing here is really that he's just taking this third interval that's a part of the arpeggio. So if we look at it as being an F major 9, then he's connecting between the two top notes in, in half steps. And this way of playing is something that he does quite a lot. There's another one in uh, Ornithology where he goes... So he runs up the F major 7 arpeggio all, up, all the way up to the 7th and then just down in half steps to the 5th. And that way just connecting from the 7th down to the 5th. The reason why this works is that when you're using chromaticism, it kind of works as a sort of tension. There are notes that you don't really expect, they don't really belong and they need to resolve. And the easiest way to resolve them is to resolve them back to the chord that you're using them on. And you do that by resolving to a chord tone, so a note in the arpeggio. In this example, Pat Martino is combining two different types of chromatic melodies. The first one is a little bit less common than the other one because that's the one where he's using a pedal point. So the line is on sort of a D minor, D minor 6 to a D flat 7 and the first thing he does is really just going from C sharp down to a B but he uses a pedal point in between so he has this A as a pedal note under it so we get this line. And that's a nice way to just bring out the chromatic movement against the note that's in the chord, which is of course is A. And then he targets the B. Once he gets there, he combines this with a chromatic enclosure, which is targeting the F. And that's this melody, so G, G flat down to E. And then really bringing out that F. Using chromatic enclosures is quite useful if you want to bring out especially chord tones. And it makes sense to just check out different chromatic melodies that are resolving to a note and then just take them through the scale and take them through maybe the notes of the triad to just get the sound of how it works when they resolve back to the chord. And if you try this for a D minor triad that could be something like this. If you want to check out some more ideas for chromatic enclosures and how you use them then I have a video with five different chromatic enclosures where there are also some examples of how to put them into licks and I'll link to that in the description of this video. George Benson is another guitar player who has a really fantastic way of incorporating chromaticism and also blues into his lines. In this example he's improvising a line on a G major 7 and it's as if he's just taking really a simple minor pentatonic box and then adding chromaticism to that. I'm not sure if he actually thought of it like that but if you think of it in those terms then it's a really easy way to get started working with some chromaticism. What we have here is a G major 7 and the line that he's playing is essentially just coming out of B minor pentatonic, so uh, this scale. And the first part of it is just a run in that scale, so from B up to A. And then from here he's just adding chromaticism within the scale, just going from note to note. So first from A down to F sharp and then from E down to D. And then he adds the C here and then going down to the A and moving up to the B here and then again down to transition to the third of F sharp minor where he plays this first part of the honey circle rose lick. So what you want to keep in mind and take away from an example like this is that very often you can actually get away with taking an arpeggio that you already know or a minor pentatonic scale and then just try and add some chromatic notes in between the notes there and see how it sounds, see if you can get away with using it in a solo and in that way get it into your playing.
another really great bebop player is Doc Rainey and in this example he's actually combining three types of chromatic phrases to create a line that's fairly simple. So the first part is just moving down from B flat to A flat then just adding a passing note in between so then from here he skips down to the C and here he's just adding a leading note to the C but just going back and forth so and then we get a chromatic enclosure to uh, target the F and he does this by starting on the G and then going down to the E and then back to the G so and then finally resolving to F from here he just continues up the scale a thing that's interesting to take away from the Doc Rainey line is that if you remove all the chromatic phrases from it then you're kind of left with this and then really what he's doing is he's, he's just filling that up and adding the chromatic phrases in between so and and in that way building the phrase and you can actually work with building phrases like that so if you have a phrase that already works then see if you can add a chromatic phrase to it or a small enclosure, some leading notes, and in that way come up with a new type of phrase. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and if you want to join us over on Patreon then I can also give you something in return for your support. Until now all the chromatic notes and phrases that I've been talking about have all been resolving and sort of neatly going back into the chord where they're used on. But with Pat Metheny that actually doesn't happen anymore. He sometimes uses chromaticism also as a short outside sound that he just adds as a little bit of edge to his lines. And I think this example illustrates that quite well. It also illustrates how Pat Metheny is in many ways a very traditional player because the first part of it is really just a bebop phrase. So we first get a minor 2-5 that's actually resolving to a G major and that's really just an A half diminished arpeggio from the 5th down to the 3rd of D7 and then skipping up to the flat 9 so and then approaching the 5th of G major F7 chromatically so it's really this could have been a Parker lick it's a very traditional bebop line uh, from here we get something that's very very typical Pat Metheny because we first move chromatically down from D to C so and then he plays this G sharp and I think that's really just coming out of what is easy to play and where where that finger is on the neck and then he uses that sound to create sort of an outside sound on top of the G major and then from here going to the B and then up to the E and down to the E flat so we kind of have this G sharp and E flat that's kind of out there and it's also a little bit as if he's spelling out an E major triad on top of the G major like this and then from here he just resolves it back into the G major 7 so just playing a G major triad and then down to the F so again adding some chromaticism but now he resolves it on the 6. Pep Metheny really uses this idea quite a lot and very often you'll find him play exactly this phrase and I'm pretty sure it has to do with how how that lies on the fretboard very often he'll also do this and then go into another thing that he uses quite a lot with chromaticism which is playing thirds in half steps like like this phrase from Solar if you want to expand your vocabulary of chromatic ideas and maybe get some completely new ideas that you can insert into your playing then check out this playlist where I'm going over some different ideas on how to use chromatic enclosures and other sort of chromatic bebop phrasing ideas.